Imagine giving a deeply personal speech to an audience of your peers while wearing a Richard Nixon mask. Not to be silly, but to be safe. It happened 50 years ago today at a conference of psychiatrists in Texas. Dr. John Fryer revolutionized mental health care by speaking publicly about being gay. But he did not look or sound like himself. He spoke as Dr. Henry Anonymous. His microphone disguised his voice, and yes, he did wear a Richard Nixon mask. His opening words, quote, I am a homosexual. I am a psychiatrist, unquote. Dr. Fryer's speech lasted just over 10 minutes. He made a case for the American Psychiatric Association to remove homosexuality from a list of mental disorders. Here is the final minute of his remarks. This is the greatest loss. Our honest humanity. And that loss leads all those others around us to lose that little bit of their humanity as well. For if they were truly comfortable with their own homosexuality, then they could be comfortable with ours. As homosexual psychiatrists, therefore, we must use our skills and wisdom to help all of them and ourselves grow to be comfortable with that little piece of humanity of homosexuality. Dr. Fryer was a professor at Temple University in Philadelphia. Today was Dr. John Fryer Day in the city and in the state of Pennsylvania. As for his speech, the APA delisted homosexuality as a mental illness less than a year later, in 1973. Let's get deeper into this story with Jillian Eugenios, a contributor to the LGBTQ news site NBC Out. Jillian, this historical speech, I understand, was something that Dr. Fryer initially did not want to give. What persuaded him to take the risk? Yeah, good evening. Thank you so much for having me. You know, Dr. Fryer, he knew the stakes. He did not want to do it at first. I mean, no one did. And that's what's really crucial is that there was no win here. You know, it was not a time when people were out, um, especially psychiatrists, you know, thinking about it 50 years ago, there was not one out gay psychiatrist in America. It was too risky. They could lose everything. They could lose their job. And with Dr. Fryer specifically, he knew those stakes very well. He had lost a job. He had been thrown out of a residency because he was gay. Um, he knew that it could cost him. And that's why he said no. However, you know, Barbara Giddings, who was one of the people who were put together, she was on the panel and she had put the panel together um, with her partner, um, Kayla Husen. And they really wanted to hear from a gay psychiatrist because on this panel, there were two um, gay people, two psychiatrists. And um, when Dr. Fryer was approached by um, Barbara initially, he said no. And then months later, he thought some more and he was like, you know what? Someone needs to say something. And you know, to, to Barbara's credit, she was like, listen, I'll pay for you to go because she got a grant. Um, she was she and she was like you can go in disguise and and he was like okay you know if I can go in disguise um, I can you know use a mic to change my voice um, he wore right. a tuxedo three times um, his size and gave his speech and he, he had to be masked it was very brave now what we're talking about here is the classific classification in the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. Talk a little bit more about what the DSM is and why changing it was so pivotal. Yeah, so the DSM um, is used by psychiatrists. Um, if it's um, a catalog of mental disorders, and um, if if you were um, a homosexual at this time. Um, it was thought that um, you were mentally ill because the DSM said you were. 
And um, that meant that you could be institutionalized against your will, you could lose a job, you could um, lose custody of a child. Um, there were substantial risks. And by removing it from the DSM, that meant that you could no longer use psychiatry as a reason for your discrimination. And you could no longer hide behind that for excluding someone who was gay from something or from you know, not giving them a job or firing them a job or something. Um, although that's a kind of another story because um, that did continue to happen. But um, yeah, it, it meant that as a class, if you were gay, you were seen as a whole, as an entirety of, of people that you were ill. Yeah, I wonder what some of the other efforts are to remember Dr. John Fryer and his efforts. I mean, I, I like to think of myself as a fairly astute student of history, especially LGBTQ history, since I am gay. And these are the kinds of things that I think I should know. I had never yeah. heard of this guy or his story until your piece. I didn't know this guy existed. There's a marker to him in the city of Philadelphia, because as we mentioned, right. he taught at Temple. But there right. is a larger push to try to make sure this story gets known and remembered. Yeah, I know what you're saying. You know, um, a lot of people feel the way you do. That I mean, some some people feel that John Fryer's speech it was on par with the importance of Stonewall because of the way that it changed the way that LGBTQ people could be in this country, and. I think that, you know, as we reflect on 50 years ago, um, we think about how important this was. And, you know, today, for example, the mayor of Philadelphia is honoring him. Um, as you mentioned at the top of this segment, it's uh, John Fryer Day now. Um, and, you know, his papers are at the Historical Society of Pennsylvania. Um, and there's that plaque as well. So the history is there, but it's, you know, up to us to continue to remember that, to work to uncover more about him and to remember his legacy. And I think that, you know, when you think about how we live today as queer people or even like the fact that you can go see a gay psychiatrist um, and that there's a gay organization of psychiatrists, I mean, that is Fryer's legacy. And yeah. that that's available to us is, is truly incredible and speaks to how important it was that he did that speech. Philadelphia has a very remarkable LGBTQ history that doesn't always get quite as much of the attention that it deserves, especially compared to places like New York because of Stonewall. But this is just another example of why Philly's gay history is definitely worth knowing and highlighting. Jillian Eugenios, Absolutely. a contributor for NBC Out. I appreciate you telling the story, Jillian. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. It was a true pleasure. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.